Today we're going to be taking a look at the black and white Air Jordan 1 in the 85 cut. I'm excited to unbox this shoe right here and give you guys some good comparisons between the other 85 cuts that have released over the past couple years. And these ones right here just might be the best ones to release so far. Starting with the box, you got your classic OG style Air Jordan 1 box, but you have the inverted colors. So on the typical box, you got the black with the red. Here you got the red with the black. And on the size tag, it reads Air Jordan 1 High 85, Black Summit White. Retail was $200 on this shoe. And these are a size 13 just for me. Now, before we crack open the box, I gotta show you guys the baby pair. I love the way they went about the packaging on this one in particular. I feel like they gave it a little bit more character than you would on this style. And we'll talk about that a little bit later as I unbox these later in the video. But for now, let's go ahead and crack this box open. Lifting off the lid right here, you got your Air Jordan paper with three different logos on there. You got your 23, your Jumpman, and your Air Jordan Wings logo. Peeling back that paper, you got some white paper that wraps around the shoe. And then you got the shoe. Oh, you got the shoe. Okay, now first impressions of this sneaker. Honestly, like I said, I think these just might be the best ones to release so far. And I'll break it all down in this video. But before we do that, we gotta talk about the history first. This is a classic right here. Back in 1985, we saw the original set of Air Jordan 1s hit the streets. Some of the classics that we all know still to this day. Chicago's, UNC's, Black Toes, Shadows, Breads, Royals, you name it. There were a lot of iconic colorways that dropped back then, and these were one of them. It's crazy to think after all those years, we have only seen two different red Retros to come from this exact colorway and that was the pair that came out in 2008 with the Jumpmans on the back and on the tongues these were part of the CDP pack also released with the black suede 22s I remember copping these when they first came out and rocking these over the years and I still love this shoe so you already know I'm excited to have this new 85 cut in my collection we'll talk about styles cuts materials and differences on these a little bit later in the video but we got to keep going with the history over the years the Air Jordan 1 had always been known to be the classic and the OG because it was the first shoe but there were definitely a lot of different models that came in and took some of the shine when we're talking about the air jordan 3s from duncan from the free throw line or the jordan 4s just alone everybody loves that model the fives the sixes when jordan won his first championship other shoes from different iconic moments and we cannot forget to mention the air jordan 11. for a long time the air jordan 11 had been one of the most hyped and sought after sneakers when it comes to a bunch of different colorways but the air jordan 1 in particular had always been releasing each and every year multiple colorways day in and day out you would always see somebody wearing a pair of Jordan 1s whether it may be a low a mid or a high somebody had a pair of Jordan 1s on in their rotation and I vividly remember back about 15 to 20 years ago when the Air Jordan 1 mid used to be one of the hottest Jordan 1s in the game because we really didn't get the OG high like we do now later in time around the early 2010 era we then started seeing the Jordan 1 high come back to life but then it had a retro vibe to it. So it had a Jumpman on the back and a Jumpman on the tongue and no Nike Air. About five to seven years later, we then saw more Jordan 1 OG highs come out, but they were the retro style and the retro cut. But that's all a lot of new sneaker heads had known. So at the time it was acceptable and everybody loved it either way. 2015 rolls around and the Chicago Air Jordan 1 comes back to life and everybody is loving it simply because it's a classic OG colorway on an OG model. And that's the best that we could get at the time. And as we all know when the last dance documentary came out years after that prices started to skyrocket jordan ones became some of the hottest shoes in the game again and next thing you know everybody's going after these shoes but all the og collectors had always been out there asking when can we get the OG style and the OG cut. So fast forward a little bit more and over the past few years, we have seen different colorways release of the OG 85 cut and the new modern day and the modern style. Yes, I know this is not exactly like the 85 ones, but this is the closest this is gonna get. And I think this pair in particular is the best one out of all of them, which I will show you guys a little bit later in the video. But so far, we have had five different colorways released to the public, and this is the fifth one that dropped. We had the new beginning Air Jordan 1s, we had the reverse bread Air Jordan 1, the neutral or natural gray Air Jordan 1, the Georgetown Air Jordan 1, and now right here, the black and white Air Jordan 1. Please don't call them pandas. So now that you guys know a little bit more about this basic, simple color blocking of a black and white shoe and why it means so much to so many different sneaker heads, let's go ahead and start breaking down the styles, cuts, and materials, and then we can get into the comparisons between the shoes because you might be shocked when you see the poll results on what people think about these compared to the other ones. Starting with the bottom of the foot, you have your classic Air Jordan 1, and when I say classic, I mean OG 
85 classic style Air Jordan 1 outsole. Now these are gonna be a lot more narrow around the middle of the foot right here and have a little bit different print and texture when you look at the midsole as well. And I'll show you that difference when you see these side by side with the 2008 pair because that's a lot more similar to your modern day Air Jordan 1 OG high cut. Now going up to the upper, one thing that I can say is when I feel the materials on this pair in particular, I think these are the best ones that they have done so far. These definitely feel the softest. They have a lot more buttery feel and it has that just premium look to it. I know the other ones do as well, but they kind of almost feel plasticky just because how stiff the leathers are and how firm it is when you touch it. Now, when it comes to the color blocking pattern on here, this is gonna be very similar to other color blocking on Jordan 1 OGs that we have seen as well. Something like the UNC ones. Oh man, I cannot wait till they drop the 85s in the UNC colorway or the storm blue ones with the 85 cut, that's gonna be crazy too. But those kind of three right there just give you an example of simple two-tone color blocking on a sneaker. Clean, nice shoe. Now going to the laces right here, these come equipped with a standard pair of black laces and you have an additional pair of white laces. I've seen these on foot with both different styles and honestly, it looks really good with both the black and the white. But I think if you were to lace these up with the white laces, I think that might be the better option. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Another dope addition that I love about these, you have the OG hang tag right here. And this has the Jordan Jumpman logo from back in the day. And then if you open it, it has the information Air Jordan 1 High. All the information about the shoe, the insole, the encapsulated polyurethane insole right here, solid rubber outsole, and then all the other aspects on the shoe when it comes to the upper. And speaking of the insole, one thing that I love about these in particular is they have really nice insoles. Not every pair of Air Jordan 1s or just Jordans in particular, they all don't have the same type of insoles. They actually did a really good job when it comes to these. They're nice and thick and soft and these feel really good on foot. Another dope aspect to this shoe that I love, they have the same OG branding with the sticker on the inside of the insole right here you can peel this off I'm gonna peel it off real quick just so you guys can see and then you have the Nike Air right there now let's put that back real quick all right back to dead stock just how we like it now looking at the sticker on the insole right here you got more information about the sneaker and it's interesting when it comes to the date right here March 29th 1982 this goes back to his college days, which doesn't really make any sense because he didn't have Air Jordans back in college. But at the same time, this could potentially be some type of Easter egg for sneakerheads on a future release. I don't know, we'll find out when the time comes. So now that we know a little bit more about the sneaker and the details of it, let's start comparing it to the other shoes and seeing what the poll results say when everybody else thinks. Oh yeah, and by the way, I need the reverse breads in my collection still. I got all the other colorways, but I don't have those yet, so I can't give you guys a comparison. But that's just a side note for anybody that's trying to hook your boy up, size 13, I need them. Anyways, back to the comparisons right here. So when you look at the toe box, it does look pretty similar, but when you actually feel the leathers on the shoe, like I said, the black pair feels a lot more soft and buttery than the New Beginnings. Another thing that I didn't mention about the Air Jordan 185, you got your embossed wings logos on the side of the foot. And honestly, I really love this hit. It just feels a lot more premium when it comes to these compared to the OG Air Jordan 1 High Retro that we normally get. Now, when you look at the shape, of these two shoes right here they are very similar but this is what I want to talk about when it comes to the shape of the other colorways because those start to change a little bit this was the first 85 retro that released to the public now let's talk about the other ones that dropped now if you look at the neutral gray Air Jordan 1 right here these came out a little bit later and these actually changed a little bit as well and like I said the materials on these way more stiff compared to the black and white colorway now another thing is gonna be different as well you have different materials on this shoe so you got your suede right here and you got your suede around the collar and I think that that partially could be something that changed the shape simply because of the material that was used. So it does look a little bit more puffy around the ankle and happen to be a little bit more rounded right here on the end. And I think that's, again, like I said, have to do a little bit more with the materials on the shoe, but it does kind of compromise the shape when it comes to the sneaker. And maybe because it's an all white shoe, it does make the shape look a little bit weird as well. But I think these ones, again, are the best example of the 85 cut. Now, when it comes to the comparison against the Georgetown right here, you can see it does look a little bit more similar on the backside, but the black and white one does look a lot more clean when it comes to the overall vertical back end. And this one kind of slants in a little bit more and a little bit more puffier around the ankle area. And this wasn't an OG colorway. They just decided to put that on the 85 cut, giving us that bringing back the nostalgia from when Jordan played against Georgetown, which 
I kind of wish they would have just only done OG colorways on the 85s. I know a lot of people love this shoe. And when you look at the poll results, it's a 50-50 split right now. But the fact that these have beaten both the white and red colorway and the white and gray colorway and are a 50-50, and this is simply a black and white shoe, that does say a lot as well. But again, it's all to each his own. Whichever one you like more, let me know down below in the comment section. Because I mean, you can't go wrong with a black and white colorway. And the Georgetown, it is a clean ass shoe. Now comparing these to the 2008 CDP Retro, you're going to see a lot of differences when it comes to the styles, the cuts and materials. Yeah, the colorway is basically the same, but besides that, everything is gonna be a little bit different. So let's go ahead and run through this real quick. As you can see from the outsoles, different outsoles, like I said, new modern retro style, more like the OG when it comes to that. Midsole, same thing, the print is different. I showed you guys that earlier. Color blocking is the same on the upper, but the materials are way different. The toe cap looks extremely different. The laces, honestly, on the 2008 pair are really, really nice. For some reason, they just never really do these laces. And these ones are a lot more premium, thicker, and softer than your typical flat laces that you get. So Jordan brand, you guys need to bring these laces back in particular. I know it's probably a little bit more money, but these things are nice. Now, another thing to look at on these two shoes is you got your Nike Air and then you have your Jumpman right here. And then again, like I said earlier, Jumpman on the back, nothing on the back. They just did the Jumpmans on the retro style. It was, I don't remember how many years they did that for. Maybe like a six year window or something like that, five year window. I don't remember how long it was. I have to go back and kind of track the years. But either way, there was a period in time where they had the retros with the Jumpman on the back like this. So I remember this era, good times, good memories. But we're on to newer, bigger, and better things. So when it comes to the comparison between these two shoes, obviously you can see it is a landslide. Everybody's rocking with the 85 cut. And again, like I said, there's reasons why. These beat all the shoes just a little bit. If the shape and everything is similar to the other ones, that's cool. But like I said, the materials on this one in particular, the best one yet. Guaranteed, like if you have these and you have them in hand, I'm sure you can attest to it down below in the comment section and tell the people what I'm talking about. So before we get into price predictions and everything when it comes to the 85 ones, we gotta talk about the baby pair because this one in particular is so freaking dope. I'm so happy that they did this. Right here, as you can see, the box looks like a locker. You got the lock right here, number one, Nike branding. It's kind of got that green and it says Baby Jordan 85 Toddler Black Summit White 5C. I grabbed these out there at All-Star Weekend. But look at this, bro. This is something that is so dope to me. They brought back the OG cut of the Baby Air Jordan 1s. So these don't look anything like the baby ones that we see in current time. This gives you the exact OG cut. Check out the midsole, it almost looks like a Cortez, bro. Like these things are crazy, super dope. When I saw these and I had the chance to get them, I knew immediately I had to cop. I don't remember how much the retail was. I feel like it was kind of a little bit more expensive, but these things got a leather sock liner on them. They got, is this leather? It looks like it, or maybe it's not. It's like a little vinyl type of material. But either way, <laughs> these things are nice. And you got them old school, little thin kind of flat rope laces that go with them, giving you the OG vibes. Bruh, oh my gosh. If anybody out there that cop these, let me know how you feel about these because the leather on these things is extremely nice. Everything about this shoe, I like these a lot. Honestly, I feel like I might like these more than I do the adult pair. And don't get me wrong, I really like the adult pair, but this baby shoe is clean. So based on the poll results that you saw throughout the video, it was pretty obvious a lot of people do like this pair in particular, and I can completely understand why. Styles, cuts, materials, colorway, neutral, goes with everything, makes sense. And then yeah, we know the Panda Dunk is popping right now, so this is a great alternative, even though these are still gonna be a little bit more expensive. So let's talk about pricing. These are currently going for around 350 bucks. I'm a size 13, so again, price does vary depending on the size of shoe that you are. But I think that they're gonna kind of sit right there around that value and hold that, and it might go up over time. And I think there's gonna be a lot of people out there that are gonna hold on to these keep dead stock pairs and treat them just like they did back in 1985 and take care of these shoes. As you can see, I have the whole set. I'm missing the reverse breads, but I'm trying to keep one of every single one dead stock and then have a second one to wear. And I wanna be able to hold on these and put them into my collection and see what happens over time, not only for value reasons, but just off of nostalgia and being able to recreate that collection. Being a younger collector, saying that I was born after 1985, 
but at the same time, I still got love for sneakers and I still wanna have that collection. And I do wanna go back and get those OG ones, but they're starting to fall apart and they're starting to deteriorate. And I get that too. So I think there's definitely gonna be a lot of people that have that same mindset when it comes to this sneaker. And there's gonna be a lot of people that wanna love it and rock it and have that nostalgia along the way. So that's why on a sneaker in particular like this, it's definitely a double or a triple up type situation because you definitely wanna rock one and stock one when it comes to something like this. So let me know what you guys think about these down below. Hopefully that gave you guys a little bit more insight about the sneaker and the history and nostalgia behind it. I appreciate you guys as always. I'll see you tomorrow on another video. Yo, before you go, I just launched my Sneakerhead Academy where we got everything on the inside. I teach you all the stuff that I learned over the past 15 years when it comes to sneakers, scaling, real estate, you name it. We talk about all of it in there. And there's an eight-week program plus a bunch of monthly giveaways. I give away shoes literally way too much, honestly. But either way, I'll see you guys on the inside. Hit the link down below in my description or pinned in the comment section for DJ Sneakerhead Academy. And I'll see you guys over there.